This one's gonna piss off the bushcrafters and some folks and I'm sorry, but this lie is that you need a big What's going on everybody? It's me, Kyle, and I am here to tell you that everything you know is a lie. When you first start out backpacking and you're Googling, reading books, doing all this research, there's a lot of information to take in. There's like too much information, especially these days online, to take in successfully. And as a result, you tend to kind of gravitate towards the information that you hear repeated over and over. And most of that information is like good information. However, there are five things related to backpacking gear that I believed when I was a beginner that turned out to be bullshit. Now, if you're a new backpacker, this is definitely going to be useful. If you're an experienced backpacker, then this is either going to reaffirm your opinions or potentially like kind of piss you off. Either way, definitely leave a comment below and let me know what you think of this list and be sure to subscribe and smash the like button. Ugh. I'm just going to get right into it. So backpacking gear lie number one that I believed when I was a beginner is that you is that you need is that you need a big heavy pair of hiking boots in order to successfully hit the trail. Now, this is a really, really common lie that I think most people believe when they first start hiking. And, and not only hikers, like I feel like just casual, like normal people that go hiking have this belief as well. That's just kind of the like intuitive thing, right? Like I'm gonna go hike, I'm gonna go charge up some mountains. I'm obviously gonna need like a big heavy pair of boots with like ankle support and be waterproof and like all this stuff. And the truth is, that's not really the case. In my personal opinion, you're much better off wearing a pair of trail runners instead of those big heavy boots. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying this is the case in like every single scenario, like ever. Like if you're hiking in the middle of the winter, you're probably gonna want some boots. I don't know, if you have like really, really shitty ankles and you really need that ankle support. But for the most part, for three season hiking with a reasonable amount of weight on your back, and certainly if you have a day pack on, yeah, you're gonna be better off with trail runners and let me explain why. I believe that having a pair of shoes that dry quickly and ventilate really well is much more important than having a pair of shoes that are waterproof. I hate to break it to you guys, but every single boot that has ever been manufactured in the history of the world has a giant hole in it and that's right where you put your foot and if you're hiking long days in the rain, it doesn't matter how waterproof those boots are, like your feet are gonna get wet. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's, it's gonna suck. With trail runners, yeah, they're gonna get wet a lot quicker, but they are gonna dry significantly faster and that is so important, especially for a long distance hike or a through hike. And the other big benefit to hiking in trail runners, in my opinion, they're, they're just so much lighter weight on your feet. Now I've heard a saying, you've probably heard it too before, I don't actually know that it's true, but it kind of makes sense, so I'm just gonna run with it. I've heard that one pound on your feet is equal to like six pounds on your back or something like that. Again, I, I can't verify that, but I can definitely verify that having a lot of weight on your feet sucks and having a lightweight pair of trail runners is just gonna feel so much better. Backpacking lie number two that I believed as a beginner, and this one's gonna piss off the bushcrafters and some folks, and I'm sorry, but this lie is that you need a big, heavy knife with you at all times when you're backpacking. Just like the heavy boots thing, it's kind of intuitive for beginner hikers to think that they need like a knife, right? Like you're going out into the woods for days, like you don't know what's out there, you don't know what you're gonna need your knife for, so you gotta have that thing, right? Well, I'm gonna say no, you don't need that. For me personally, I do not carry a knife at all. Like zero knives are in my pack at all times. That's not the case with most people. Even ultralight backpackers often will still carry like a, a little knife or something. So I'm not gonna say you don't need any knife at all. I'm saying you don't need like a big knife, like something like uh, this, for instance. There we go. Yeah, this thing, you see it? You don't need it. Fucking throw it over, ooh. Fuck. <laughs> ah. If you really think about it, like what do you actually need a big knife for when you're backpacking? Like maybe you need to cut like a bear bag line or something, but you could probably do that with a small knife. Uh, maybe like cutting some food or cutting some cheese, ha, 
<laughs> After well over 3,000 miles, like those are literally the only things I can think of that you might need a knife for when you're backpacking. So again, I just don't see the point in carrying that and most people think when they first start out that a knife is an absolute essential and I'm gonna call bullshit. I'm gonna say that's not the case. So backpacking gear lie number three that I believed as a beginner is that rain jackets are waterproof. Now this is definitely not the case. I know that sounds like totally crazy. Like it's a rain jacket. It's supposed to be waterproof. Like why are you getting it if it's not waterproof? And here is the facts. No, here are the facts, yeah. Much like if you're hiking with a waterproof pair of boots for an extended period of time, if you're out there in the rain, it doesn't matter how waterproof your jacket is, eventually some water's gonna get in. You got a hole like right here where you, your freaking big old head goes. You got, I mean, I don't need to explain where the holes are on jackets. Like my point is water is, yeah, it's gonna get in eventually. And this is kind of why I think the purpose of a rain jacket when you're backpacking is not necessarily to keep you dry, but to actually keep you warm. And another thing to keep in mind here is when you're hiking in that rain jacket, you might be sweating a little bit extra. And so the inside of like, you know, where this stuff is still gonna get like wet, regardless of whether or not the jacket actually keeps the rain off of you. And for that reason, when you buy a rain jacket, you should really be focusing more on how warm it's gonna keep you and not if it's gonna keep you dry or not because it's not gonna keep you dry. I hate to break it to you. Backpacking gear lie number four that I believed as a beginner is that Nalgene water bottles are like the end all be all of backpacking water bottles. This is just not the case at all, but I feel like when people think of like hiking water bottles, the first thing they think of is Nalgene bottles. I mean, they're like indestructible. You're not gonna have to worry about like breaking your water bottle, right? They can hold a lot of water. They're just like super outdoorsy. And then you can walk around your college campus and put a bunch of Bernie Sanders stickers on them and stuff. Like it's, it's just great. But the, <laughs> the truth is those Nalgene bottles are not the greatest kind of bottle to carry while you're backpacking. Again, in my opinion. And also again, not talking winter here. I know winter is a whole different ball game, but three season, like, if you're still hiking with Nalgene's, I mean, you gotta get with the times, bro, I'm telling you. The biggest reason why I don't like to use Nalgene water bottles is just because they're way, way heavier than like a plastic smart water bottle or life whatever stupid brands there are. In my opinion, like, the weight difference between Nalgene's and plastic bottles is super, super significant, and for that reason, I would never, ever hike with a Nalgene. For instance, a Nalgene weighs, a, actually, I don't even know how much a Nalgene weighs. Let's go figure this out real quick. Alexa, how much does a Nalgene water bottle weigh? Kyle, shut the f up with your ultralight bullshit. According to sectionhiker.com, a one liter wide mouth Nalgene bottle weighs about 6.2 ounces empty. And let me just say, I'm not the only one who feels this way about Nalgene's because the author writes right here, whenever I see a backpacker carrying wide mouth Nalgene bottles, I cringe. <laughs> <laughs> he cringes and honestly I do too. There's really no reason to carry that shit. Save yourself some weight and get a plastic bottle instead. This next backpacking gear lie that I believed as a beginner is that pack covers are the way to go in terms of keeping your backpack and your gear dry while you're hiking. This is just not the case. And again, I keep saying this, but it seems intuitive for beginners, right? You know, you walk into REI and the guy with the sandals and the man bun comes up to you and he's like, how can I help you? And you say, I need something to keep my backpack and gear dry. What should I get? He brings you over to the gear section and he hands you one of these pack covers. It all makes sense, right? They're, that's literally what they're designed to do is, is keep your dry. And I'm here to tell you that's not necessarily the best way to go about things. I realized after a couple trips that the best way, in my opinion, to keep your stuff dry is to actually use a trash compactor bag inside your pack. You line your pack with this shit and that is gonna do a much better job of keeping your gear dry. All of your gear is gonna get sealed up safely inside your pack, and there's gonna be no holes or no way for water to get in. But with a pack cover, you're just putting it on the outside of your pack. And much like a few of the other things I've talked about, there's still ways that water can actually get in. I mean, there seems to be a theme of like holes and water getting into those holes in this video, which is a terrible way to say what I, like, 
Wow. But it's true, the pack cover just isn't gonna keep your stuff as dry as a trash compactor bag. And honestly, if it starts to rain and you don't have the pack cover on, then you have to like stop and do all this stuff and like put it on. So I don't know why it's not that much stuff. <laughs> It's just one extra step to, to do when it starts to rain. But with a trash compactor bag, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. You can just keep on charging right through the rain, wishing that you were somebody else and really, really hating your life because rain sucks. Once again, I really need to know what you guys think of this list. Leave a comment below if you agree with what I said and smash the like button if you disagree. Also leave a comment below, call me dumb or make fun of me because I'm a millennial or whatever. And you can smash the dislike button. I'm not, I'm not afraid. Honestly, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, that's gonna do it.